Hello, and welcome back to Heart Centered Money Conversations. We are on episode eight already, which is blowing my mind. But <laughs> we're going to be talking all about making the most out of your yearly tax return. So tax season is upon us. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> And in this episode, we're really going to be, um, well, Kristen's going to be diving into strategies to stop overpaying the government, which who doesn't want more of that. And um, if you're somebody who is usually typically at the end of the year, having to pay a whack ton to the government about readjusting it so that that doesn't happen, strategies around that. And then also if you're somebody who receives a, a, a chunk back at the end of the year, amazing how you can actually go about making the most out of that. So in this episode, basically, we want to put more money into your pockets and out of the yes. <laughs> And so for those of you who don't know, Chris and I, maybe it's your first time tuning into this series. This is the Heart Centered Money Conversations. And my name is Laura Plahuda, and this is Kristen Maybe, who's a financial coach. And this is a series all about financial wellness, where we're diving into numerous topics around education, around finances. And this whole series is purely education. Um, And the whole intention with this is really being able to give you the tools, the strategies, the resources to empower you in your financial decisions so that you can really set yourself up and your family for an incredible financial future. So if it's your first time here, welcome. If you are back, how's it going? Happy to have you back. Um, How's things been going throughout the series? We would love to hear in the comments. And mm-hmm. how was the last episode, which we did budgeting, which I know that was a really amazing episode. Well, they all are. <laughs> <In my opinion. laughs> but um, yeah, how's the how the budgeting one go for all of you? We would love to absolutely hear before we go ahead and dive into the tax returns so that we can make the most out of our money. So if you want to pause the video, let us know. We are going to jump right into this. So Kristen, if you want to take it away for taxes, that would be amazing. Yes. Awesome. I love if you're jumping off of doing your budget and jumping into this video, they line up perfectly because you need to have everything together for your taxes. (laughs) So we're going to talk all about not preparing your taxes today, but we're going to talk about the tax return. Because that's the exciting part, isn't it? Right? (laughs) So what if you had a plan for your tax return? Often I hear, you know, people are like, oh, I bought a boat or (laughs) like I'm just going to put it towards debt. And like they don't really have a strategy for their tax return to make the most out of it. And that's really what we're going to do. Because like what if you can make that money grow for you? You probably want to know about it, right? So... I'm going to hopefully change your thinking around tax returns today. So bear with me, but I think that you're going to get a lot of value out of this. So first, what we want to talk about is what is a tax return? (laughs) Because sometimes we don't think about this, but really what a tax return is, is you're paying your taxes throughout the year. And then at the end of the year, when you file your taxes, the government says, you pay too much to us, we're going to give you a portion of it back. So they're giving you your own money back. So don't think the government's just being nice and giving you some extra money, <laughs> right? It's your own money that you probably should have been keeping in the first place, but we'll get there. <laughs> so that's what a tax return is. And the average tax return in Canada is $2,093. That's huge right? $2,000. Like if you get a check for $2,000, like that can change some things for you. So I wanted to look at this in a different way, right? The average person is overpaying the government. Let's say we're going to round it to $2,100 on a yearly basis. But what if we broke that up into monthly? How much are people overpaying every single month? So it's $174.42 if you want to know exactly, but let's run with 174 <laughs> So what if you had the opportunity to use $174 in a more efficient way instead of overpaying the government? Let's look at it this way. If I were to come to your house every single month and hand you a check for $174, I bet 
right away you thought about something that you would do with it, <laughs> right? Without even having to really think on it, you're like, I'm going to buy a new vacuum. Or, <laughs> I'm going to do this or I'm going to, you know, I really wanted to take the kids to go to this place, right? Like automatically you're spending that money in your head before. I, it's just, it's just an imaginary check, <laughs> right? But there's some people who actually need that money, right? If some people, if you hand them $174 every single month, that could be really life-changing. So there's wants versus needs, which we talked about on the last episode. But this could be a grocery bill, right? Um, I know my partner and I, we spent about $150 at the grocery store. There's just two of us, obviously, families are more, but it could be utility bill, right? It could be things that are essential for people's living, right? So what if we had the power to do something different with this money? $174 a month is nothing to sneeze at, right? And I wanted to think about a little bit, and I'm sure, Laura, you can chime in on this as well, is why do we overpay? And the biggest reason that we overpay on our taxes is because we have the fear of having to owe, right? How many people are like, I don't want to owe on my taxes, or I haven't done my taxes because I don't want to know how much I owe, right? There's a lot of avoidance around it, but when you... <laughs> end of the year, you're like, shit. <laughs> yes. I, <know> what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even want to know, <laughs> right? So it's, if you don't have the fear and you have a plan and a strategy, then you're you're going to get rid of that and you're not going to avoid your taxes anymore. Mm -hmm. Like uh, Laura and I were talking about, there's so many people I know that I talk to them about taxes or I haven't paid in a couple of years. And it's like, just because they've been avoiding it. It doesn't have to be this big overwhelming thing, especially because if you just do it year after year, it's not going to accumulate and seem like this big elephant, right? <laughs> And if you do so, your budgeting, which I'm excited to do so that the tax season becomes easier. <laughs> yeah, if you do your budgeting, you have all the numbers. So I use a spreadsheet, like I mentioned in the last episode. I literally just give my spreadsheet to my accountant and it has everything added up for them. They plug it into their program and they're like, here you go, this is how much you owe. Like it's super easy because I do it all year round. So good point, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so what if there was a way that you didn't owe the government, but they didn't owe you either. Because like I mentioned, if you get a tax return, it's just because they owe you that money back. And what if you level the playing field? A lot of people don't know that you can actually get your HR to adjust your taxes, how much tax gets taken off your paycheck, so you can pay less, right? Or sometimes maybe you owe money every single year. You can get them to adjust it so they take off more. So you don't have to deal with that tax bill, right? There's a lot of different options there, but a lot of people don't know that they have that option, right? So let's take an example of, say you pay $10,000 in your taxes. The average tax return is let's say $2,000. So what that means is if you adjust it, then you can say, okay, next year, I'm only going to pay $8,000 in my taxes. I'm not going to get a tax return, I, but I'm not going to owe any money either because you're paying the proper amount rather than overpaying for the taxes. So that's kind of what that looks like. And you can just talk to your HR about you know, adjusting that for you. There's calculations that we can do to find out what's that perfect number. I can try to help walk you through that or talk to your accountant and they can help you walk through what's the, um, it's really just a percentage of your income, right? So it will depend on how much you make to find out your tax brackets, these different things, but it doesn't have to be complicated and you can even play around with it. You know, maybe you just like, I'm just going to take 5% off less. And then <laughs> and maybe at the end of the year, you're going to see where you're at. Just don't, don't complicate it. Just, just run with the punches kind of idea. So I wanted to look at why would we, like, Kristen, why would I change my time? Like, well, I like getting a tax return. Why would I even adjust this? And this is why. Because <laughs> what if you have the opportunity to put it towards some of your goals that you set out from the budgeting, right? What if you invested that money so it could work harder for you and turn that $2,000 into way more money? Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at this. 
So if you're 35 years old and you invest that $174 every single month instead of overpaying the government, because this is money that's coming out of your budget already, right? You're already finding that money to give the government. So it just means that you're going to be able to have it on a monthly basis instead of taking it off in taxes every single month, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to go into your pocket. So that $174, we're just going to use it in a different way. Let's invest that for 30 years, 35, age 35 to age 30. Let's say you're 65 years old. What happens is you would have at 9% rate of return, just under 132,000, uh, sorry, $322,000. I'm going to say that again. You're going to have just under $322,000 just by investing $174 at 9% on a rate on a monthly basis, which means you're going to be $322,000 richer than you are now. <laughs> so this is one reason I think personally, that's pretty good incentive to adjust my taxes. So I get to keep that money rather than giving it the government. Because the reality is if you're giving them that money, that's $322,000 that you're missing out on. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's pretty significant. <laughs> I can interesting so, agree with that, Christine, because it's like um, sometimes you can maybe have the mentality around like, oh, well, I'm receiving that, say, $2,000 at the end of the year. I could invest it then or do whatever with it. But with, I know you've mentioned in previous ones where there is a time factor, whereas if every single month, just by adjusting that with your HR, you're then able to then, instead of having it come off your paycheck, to the government for them to hold on to it and them to invest it, which they probably yeah. are, then you can then keep that money and intentionally save it, invest it and make that money. And then over those, those months, like over the course of the year, that's where that extra money comes from, from whatever percentages that you're making with your investments. So I think that's just, it's massive. If you're somebody who is um, receiving a return at the end of the year, Instead of having this like mentality of being like, oh, well, that's it, it is amazing that we're receiving this this chunk at the end of the year. However, it can be better, you know. It can yeah. be more lucrative with that over the course of time if you really want to be increasing that amount of passive income that you're making. If that's something, yeah, that's you. absolutely. And it it comes down to in a sense discipline as well is mm -hmm. if you say you just you're like, I'm going to invest that $2,000 every single year, when you have to, a check for $2,000 in your hand that you didn't really have to work for, <laughs> likely you're gonna, well, I'm just gonna do this, I'm just gonna use a little bit for this, mm -hmm. right. But if you set it up on an automatic schedule, it's really going to get you to where you want to be. So you yeah. can invest that at the end of the year. But then you're you don't have all that money that can grow over that time. Right. You have to wait like it's a one time investment and one time investments can be good if they're a huge lump sum. But if you can do it kind of throughout the year, it's I know because we talked about this with RSP loans, but it's different because with this, you're paying it throughout the year instead of getting it at the end of the year and dumping it in. It only works out to a benefit of doing a lump sum if you do it before you would have made all those payments. Right. Does that did I explain that? OK, Laura, does that make sense? For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So it's, it's the lump sums are really good. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> but it's only if you're doing a lump sum before doing the monthly payments, instead of doing monthly payments in doing a lump sum later kind of idea. Or if you already have monthly payments kind of going out and you're like, okay, hey, I want to throw this extra lump sum onto it. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah. Yes. That's good. I love that. So I wanted to look, I love numbers. If you don't know that about me already, <laughs> but I wanted to look at, I was like, well, I wish I knew this sooner, <laughs> right? With most of the things we learn around finance. What if you started doing this right out of university? Say you're, tw I used to age 23. That's when I finished university. You're 23 years old and you're going to do this, invest $174 every single month to, for till you hit age 65, it's going to be a 42 year period that you're going to do this. I'm sure you probably can't even guess this number. No. <laughs> so if you do this at that same 9%, you're going to have 9,000, nine, sorry, $988,763. Let's round that up. 
$989,000 come retirement just because you were putting this money away instead of giving it to the government. Yeah. I don't know. It's like, Crazy. how do I become a millionaire? This is how you become a millionaire. Yeah. <laughs> Very well, <simply>. There's the <laughs> secret. Very One the secret. <laughs> so if you have right? anybody in their early 20s, Send them this video, send them this series because you will friggin' save them so much down the road. <laughs> I honest, because they have a longer period of time for that money to grow. I literally have a PowerPoint presentation that I do with my younger clients. It's like, let me teach you how to become a millionaire because yeah. they have so much time. It doesn't have like $174 a month. You're 23. You have no responsibilities. You're living with your parents. Like, yeah. tell me you can't put $174 away every single month, yeah. right? Uh, absolutely. So it's, it's really important to just look at things a different way. Right. And so if you're like, okay, well, I don't get $2,000 back, Kristen, how do I figure it out? Take your tax return, divide it by 12 and put that much into an account every single month. Right. But you got to make sure you're investing it in the right places. And I know we need to do an episode on that for sure. <laughs> And so, what you just said, Kristen, about taking the amount, dividing it by 12, they would also have to go into their HR to adjust the number as well as doing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So yeah. what you would do is you would like figure out how much that monthly amount is, but then adjust it so you can make sure that those extra taxes aren't taken off. Thank you, Laura. That's really important. So, okay, that's one side is like, this is future planning, because you probably didn't do that for 2023. But you're going to do it for 2024. <laughs> if you choose to do your research, all those things, this is educational. <laughs> so I also wanted to look at, okay, well, Kristen, what if I do get a tax return? My biggest thing for you is don't go buying a boat. Right. Because I don't know, we bought a boat. It was twenty five hundred dollars. Right. Just a little fishing boat. But let's say that's pretty much the price of a tax return. Right. <laughs> Not what we did, but the, we bought a boat. <laughs> don't, don't go buy don't, a boat. We bought a boat. <laughs> we didn't buy the boat with the tax return. OK, it was one of the goals. OK, if anybody wants a boat, we're selling a boat. <laughs> <laughs> put the link below <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay so don't go buying a boat because the reality is is like if you just invest this money so laura touched on well what if you just invest your tax return so i the power of time is so important we talked in an earlier episode about the cost of waiting it's like my favorite thing to talk about in finance because i think it's one thing that is really underestimated so if you invest that $2,100 at 9% return for 30 years, say you're 35 years old again, then that's going to grow without putting any additional money in it. It's going to be just under $31,000. You just turned your $2,100 into $31,000, right? So it's just making sure that you're putting it in the right places. So if you do get that tax return and you have that discipline, that's an option, but I think mathematically it would work out better for you to adjust your taxes and do it on a monthly basis because it has more time to grow throughout the year instead of doing it a lump sum at the end of the year. And that's assuming so, that your values and your goals are that you want to create financial freedom for yourself and you want to create passive income, right? If you're yeah. if you want to go buy a boat, then go buy it. But we're assuming that you, you, you want to really be able to create a different financial future for yourself. <laughs> or you're in a place where you're like, okay, well, I'm going to invest it and let it grow for five years and then I'm going to buy a boat. Yeah. Right. Because then you're you got a whole boat. bunch of abundance. You're here because you want more. You're like, I've already I got know. a whole bunch. I can buy a boat and I'm gonna do this. Yeah. <laughs> do both. Matching ski do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. You're doing all the things. So yeah, obviously it depends on what your goals are, but I imagine that you're here because you have some kind of saving goal. Yeah. Right. So yeah. these are some options for you. So you could put it towards debt. Sometimes I hear that often too, but you have to run the math because often what I find in stay with me for a minute, because interest can be a good and negative thing. It's used in two different ways. So, so you can pay off your debt and maybe you save some negative interest that you would have been paying towards the lender. But what I have found when I've run the calculations is if you invest that money, 
the interest that's going to grow over a long period of time is going to be way more than the amount of money that you would have saved the interest that you would have not paid to that lender. So the positive interest outweighs the negative interest, essentially. So I guess so it depends you depend on the, the percentage of the payments you have for the debt that you have. Um, honestly, like every time I've run this, this is how it's worked out regardless. Yeah. So like run the numbers, yeah, find out for yourself. Numbers, yeah. yeah. But this, this is how I figured it out. I'm like, okay, well, if it's going to take me 10 years to pay off my debt, if I invest that money and leave it for 10 years, what's going to be better? And mm -hmm. that's how we run it. And so it's really interesting because a lot of the times we think just paying off our debt, but maybe we put a small portion towards the debt and then we invest the rest. Again, it's like, I love numbers. It's all just math, right? What's going to get you towards your financial goals faster? So those are some options because typically it's like I'm buying a boat or I'm paying off the boat that I already paid for. Like I'm paying off the debt, <laughs> right? So those are some things. And then another thing that you can do I really love this is you can also take the tax return. Say you invest it into your RSP or your first home savings account, because that gives you a tax deduction. What does a tax deduction do? It gives you money back on your taxes, right? So it creates a tax return for next year and then it creates this cycle, right? So even if you're doing it monthly, you can still put it into your RSP or your first home savings account to get that tax deduction. And then it creates a cycle because then every time you get money back, you put it into one of these accounts and it starts working for you again. And so it's really, really powerful over time. So I honestly, like it's so many options with your tax return, just, being mindful of what your goals are is going to be what you need to do to discover the best way that's going to suit you. Like there's obviously a lot of options, but those are two options that you could consider is doing it monthly or actually investing that tax return into a registered account like an RRSP and trigger another tax break for another year. Mm -hmm. So those are some things. And actually, Laura, I wanted to... Uh, see if you can kind of give us a little bit of insight around like mindset and values and why most people, when they get the tax return, they do just impulse buy. They're like, oh, I've always wanted this thing. And they just buy that. Can you give us a little bit of like mindset piece around that? Yeah, for sure. I think we kind of touched on it a little bit already, but it really just goes around our values, right? When we value certain things, then we will, then our money will flow to it. Um, and I don't know if it was on an episode or just in our conversation where you shared that um, where our money goes actually shows us our values. And it's very true, right? So when you actually mm -hmm. look at the different types of areas, whether it's health and wellness, whether it's, I want to make more money. I want to um, like, I love food. I love these things. Like it really shows us where, what our values are. And yeah. when we can really follow that money. It shows us where it goes. And so the misalignment comes in when, conditioning we're still kind of running off of old conditioning that is bringing us exactly where we are in this present moment right it's not moving us mm. forward. it's already bringing us to where we are so we're just basically falling into old patterns that are just keeping us the same you know if, yeah. if that was a value of our parents to do certain things or that's a value of our social group mm -hmm. is to do certain things then we may fall into those patterns or maybe their emotional yeah. purchases, you know, like maybe I'm just like feeling, have a lot of emotions pent up and I'm going to go and buy the thing on Instagram that comes up for that quick dopamine hit, you know? So it can be a whole bunch yeah. of different reasons when it comes to what we do with that kind of that, that lump sum, but really the, like being intentional about it, you know, like sitting down and taking like some time to actually ponder what you want to do with this money is really the best idea. Cause then you can really tune into, okay, what is important to me now in this moment? And then mm -hmm. move forward from there, right? If I have been somebody yeah. who's been working like a dog, I've been investing my money, I've been doing all of these things. And I'm like, I really want a vacation. <laughs> I really want to go away. I want to be on a beach. I want to go kind yeah. of something. I want to go do this. Then, hey, take it, do it. You've already been doing kind of the other pieces that are in your values that align with you. That's something that you want. Yeah. However, if it's something that you're really wanting right now in your life where you're like, I'm seeing the need that I need to increase my finances. 
I need to be able to create a greater financial freedom for myself, for my family, for generations to come, then mm-hmm. that's definitely something that yeah. you're kind of focusing on and, and being intentional about, which is for assuming why people are really here learning this information. I know yeah. even for me too, like that's definitely something I've traveled, I've done all of these things. And now it's like, okay, now is the time to be able to sit down and be intentional about all of this stuff that I didn't learn before, you know, so that I don't have to yeah. with that story of being like, oh, there's only certain people that can become millionaires in their lifetime. It's not me. <laughs> it's like, no, that's just a story. Yeah. You know, like we all have yeah. the of doing anything that we want when we're intentional about it. And we're blessed with all of the resources abundantly here sitting in front of us online these days. So it really is just that intentionality, yeah. really tuning into your own values. Yeah, I think that's so true. I just wanted to touch on the whole vacation thing because I think vacations are really important for your mental health as well, Mm -hmm. of just to recharge, get out of your environment, even if it's like I'm going to a cottage or whatever that looks like. And we talked on the last episode about just like a budget isn't restricting yourself to a life that isn't fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Because when you're, you're not taking vacations and taking time for yourself, then you're not able to be the most productive you know, person that you're able to be or your best version of yourself, whatever that looks like. I always say productive because I'm like, I just want to achieve all the things. (laughs) I want to do everything. (laughs) But yeah, I think, um, I think that it's so, it's so true of just knowing where those values lie and, um, the habits and, and the priorities that you have, it makes a huge difference in being able to actually achieve those goals. Yeah. And as humans, so, like we have to learn through experience. We usually swing from one end of the pendulum to the complete opposite so that we can find yeah. the middle ground as well. Right. So it's like, we have to go through those yeah. experiences before we're like, okay, no, like this is where I want to happily be balanced and living. So being able to go through yeah. the experiences of what we need to experience, but then intentionally coming back to the center of what that looks like is so important. Yeah. I think a hundred percent because like sometimes you can't be on the plane of I want to save for my retirement until you've gone through these emotions right sometimes you have to get like so frustrated yeah 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 absolutely I think it's just like knowing where you are and just being okay with that because our intention with this whole series is to never be in a place of oh I wish I knew that or I feel guilty I haven't been saving or anything like that these are just opportunities for you to learn and like take the best, leave the rest kind of thing. What's going to work for you because you're going to be different than myself or Laura and that's okay. And it's just knowing where you are. And this is a guilt-free environment, regret-free environment, but it's just learning and executing those steps when they feel right for you. Right. So, and speaking of steps, let me share the homework for this week, actually. (laughs) So if you, sorry, would we be just briefly on, um, if somebody says over or no, sorry, if somebody is having to pay the government at the end of the year, kind of just those Mm. steps that that person can do to be able to help them to make the most out of um, everything. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm really glad that you brought that up, Laura. So What I would do is if you are owing at the end of the year, this is what I do. I'm a business owner. So I actually give put a portion. I send it to the CRA monthly, a portion of my income. So that way, at the end of the year, I'm like, okay, hopefully I don't owe very much because I've been paying a little bit throughout the year. So that's one option. Um, People would argue that you should invest it and then take it out of that investment and put it at the end of the year. For me, it's just the discipline. I'm like... I just don't even want to think about it. I want it like more automatic. So that's one option. The other option is investing it, right? But you only have a year to save that money. So you have to be careful with your investment because the market's been rocky the last few years. You don't want to have less money (laughs) than the money that you need at the end of the year. So just be careful if you are investing it. But what I would recommend is if you look at how much that you owed last time, like last year, say 2022, you can just divide that up into the months, 
right? And then you can put that money away into like an emergency fund or high interest savings account would be maybe a good option. Again, do your research. Uh, so there's a few different options, but I would say do it monthly. So that way at the end of the year, whether it's like you're taking it from your high interest savings account and paying the government or you're paying the government a little bit every single month, it just puts you in a place that you don't need to stress all year about having to pay your taxes at the end of the year. So those are some options for people like business owners, especially who have to owe. The other thing is like have a really good accountant that is going to be able to tell you all your write offs and know what makes the most sense like my accountant is really good and she was saying like you can only write off this much of your food and I'm like oh I thought it was like a percentage no it's a dollar amount <laughs> like it's crazy right so there's so many things about that but having a good accountant helps too because then you're able to write off the right things mm -hmm. so that helps you pay less taxes mm -hmm. I hope that helps in um but I think that's a, a really really valuable question absolutely yeah. And then, um, so, yeah, like that, cause it's like kind of monthly too. So it's not like this big surprise at the end. Um, and then if yeah. you, like an employee who has an HR, they can just go to their HR and change mm -hmm. that slightly. So they're paying a little bit more and Absolutely. then kind of going off automatically from their paycheck. And same thing with being, yeah. a it's like, you're not really going to miss it if it's coming every month. And then that way you may then have a little bit extra, and then you can kind of keep playing around with it. And then also the other thing I know that you mentioned before mm -hmm. was using your RRSP. Sorry, and? Using your RRSP as well. Yeah, right? using your RRSP, absolutely. So if you do feel like you're gonna owe taxes, you can put money into your RRSP or even a first home savings account if you're eligible for it, um, because that'll help get you a tax deduction. There's also some really amazing tax credits like the disability tax credit, which we're going to be talking about in a few episodes from now. Uh, so there's some tax credits too that you can use to basically pay less taxes. And so just kind of knowing these ins and outs. And that's again, why it's really important to have a good accountant because your accountant can tell you if you put this much into an RSP, then you need to owe this much. If you put this much, you don't need to owe. They can kind of run those numbers for you. Um, but again, listen to the RSP episode because RSPs, they can be really good, but they might not work for everyone. Cool. So, yeah, that's great. Beauty. Awesome. Thank Beautiful. You. Yeah, absolutely. So the homework for this week or actionable items is first discover how much you want to reduce your taxes by. So basically, if you're overpaying the government and you're getting a tax return, find out kind of that sweet spot. Consider investing your tax return, either on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis, if you're going to do it that way. And then also start preparing for your 2023 taxes because they're due at the end of April. <laughs> so it's coming up quick and it just will put you in a place where you're not like, oh, no, I owe four years. <laughs> So just make sure that you start preparing it. The, the last two episodes should be really helpful for you to kind of make sure that you're on that track. If you're watching this later in the year, maybe you didn't catch it right when it came out, uh, do your taxes. <laughs> so that's my advice to you. So is there anything that you wanted to add, Laura? I don't think so. I think that's amazing. If anybody has any questions, feel free to put them in the comments as always. And um yeah, I think that's it. I think it's amazing. Looking Beautiful. forward to your well, taxes thanks. this year. There you go. Yes. <laughs> taxes. Thanks for this beautiful woman. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. No, and I thank like you, everyone, for joining us. It's been honestly such a pleasure to be able to have the opportunity to share all this information. Uh, Laura and I know, I know we're really grateful to be able to do this series and help to educate. So subscribe and follow for more if you're loving this content. And even we'd love to hear in the comments, maybe what's the most valuable thing that you've gotten so far and just really feel into your heart around your finances. And we'll see you on the next episode. Okay. See you next time. Awesome. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye.